What is up coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type and in this video we are still in Cosmic Era 73 as we explore CE73 Stargazer. This OVA has a more concise story in 50 minutes than Destiny could accomplish in 10 episodes. In this story, we will follow the neutral organization DSSD as they launch their new scientific Gundam. We will follow a Phantom Pain team member as he is assigned to capture the new 401 mobile suit. So let's dive into this. A group of Patrick Zala loyalists have succeeded. Operation Break the World is a success. The remains of Junia 7 fall onto Earth and cause a devastating massacre. Celine and Edmund contact a young soul who is currently in mission control. She is concerned with the schedule of 401. Luckily, it is on schedule. Celine and Edmund are able to make it to the top of the building where a giant tsunami flooded the city due to the falling Junia 7. They eventually are able to seek refuge in a building where the Earth Alliance forces are holding out. We find out that they are a part of DSSD. The Deep Space Survey and Development Organization, or DSSD, is a neutral scientific organization that is responsible for the development of a mobile suit intended for space exploration, which we will talk about in a moment. It seems in the cosmic era, humanity hasn't really explored all too much beyond Mars's orbit. The DSSD wants to change that and explore more of the solar system. Also remember that there's aliens in this universe? The writer sure forgot. Meanwhile, a Jan insurgent type takes down a helicopter that is trying to evacuate people from the area. The ZGMF 1017 Jin insurgent type is no different than the original Jin, but with the addition of extra lights in low light areas and a brown paint job. It has a machine gun, a recoilless rifle, and a guided assault machine gun. It begins attacking the city that was just attacked by a fallen colony. That's rude. Back at DSSD, they are waiting for Selene to launch the shuttle. Even though they are a space exploration unit, they actually do not have access to a mass driver system. They wait for Selene, but they may have to launch without her. Selene goes on without Edmund. He goes back to fight against the Jins. He gets in a linear gun tank with a sergeant that used to look up to him in his former years as a soldier. The linear gun tank is the standard issue Earth Alliance tank that we have seen throughout both Alliance plant wars. These are very fast tanks with a linear gun and a smoke discharger. It resembles the Type 61 tank in Universal Century. He rushes in close to the Jin and gets a direct hit on the mobile suit, but the Jin was able to do damage to the gun tank. Selene makes it to the shuttle on time. They begin launching. Edmund is on the verge of death, but looks up to see the shuttle in the sky. The EA opens up the Jin to find three children that were piloting the mobile suit. Earth is informed that the people that attacked the city are the Zala loyalists and that Zaft is denying any involvement and claiming it as an insurgency. They decide to send out the Phantom Pain team. At a power plant, Earth Alliance is getting run down by Zaft terrorists when Phantom Pain comes in. EA is saved by the Blue Duel, Verde Buster, and Strike Noir Gundams. The GAT X1022 Blue Dual Gundam is a development project between Phantom Pain and Acteon Industries that is called the Acteon Project, which sought to create the most customizable mobile suits for ace pilots. It has a redesigned dagger taken from the strike dagger design and is made for close combat mainly. The pilot of this mobile suit is Muddy Holcroft of Phantom Pain. It has a variable shift armor which extends to its special armor, the Fortestra. The GAT X103 AP Verde Buster Gundam. Just like the original Buster, this variant is mainly used as a heavy weapons long range mobile suit. It is more or less the same as the Buster, with the exception of the extended battery and a face mask to protect sensors from close combat. The pilot of this unit is Shams Koza. The GAT X105E Strike Noir Gundam is a variant of the Strike equipped with the Noir Striker Pack. The Noir Striker Packs consist of a multi striker pack which can carry nukes, the Speculum Striker, which is similar to the L Striker, the Calibrin Striker, a short range striker pack with a flying robot arm, and the Sun Bullet Striker Pack, which is similar to the Launcher Striker. 
Unlike the two units, this has a face shift armor. Like the Strike Rouge, this unit's French name is derived from its black face shift armor. It is piloted by Sven Cal Bayern. They come in and save the EA plant from the insurgents. Later, the pilots are taking a break while watching a video of the kids who piloted the Jin. These kids were coordinators born of natural parents who were killed and are calling for an end to Blue Cosmos. Sham scoffs while Muddy says the best coordinator is a dead coordinator. Meanwhile, Sven daydreams of a time when he wanted to become an astronomer. He is at an astronomy exhibit when an explosion occurs. It seems his parents were killed and he was taken by the Alliance where he becomes an ace pilot. Sven and a team go out with a team of slaughter daggers. They are to take down a coordinator refugee camp that may be training terrorists. The GAT-01A-2R-105 Slaughter Dagger is a customized dagger used by Phantom Pain. It is mainly equipped with the standard Ale Striker pack to allow for flight. The only difference between the Slaughter Dagger and the Dagger is that the Slaughter Dagger uses shell weapons instead of beam weapons. Why? Because beam weapons vaporize people, and if you want to make a scene appear more gruesome, we need to see that blood and torn limbs. Sven and his team unload onto the camps, killing hundreds. Sven has a flashback within a flashback where he remembers the brutal training as a member of Phantom Pain. He's being watched by Azrael. Azrael was the first president of Blue Cosmos during CE-71 and the first Alliance plant war. Meanwhile, up in space, Selene discusses this new 401 mobile suit, which uses the Vaucher Lumiere propulsion alongside the solar sail. This will drastically reduce the need for hydraulics, one scientist states. Meanwhile, the Phantom Pain team is on a mission on Earth. The Blue Duel is being attacked by three Baku Hounds. The TMFA 802W2 Kerberos Baku Hound is the latest variant of the Baku. The upgraded Bakus weren't a part of the new Millennium series of mobile suits, but one guy with money threw a bone to the Baku engineers, I guess. Its main upgrade is the ability to use the wizard system, just like the Zaku units. Specifically, it utilizes the Kerberos Wizard Pack, which adds two extra heads. This is the most metal unit we've seen in the Cosmic Air in a while. More units like this might have made Destiny a little bit more bearable. Maybe. The Kerberos Wizard can also be added to a Zaku Warrior, which also looks really metal. I am going to have to read this Delta Estray manga. Three units come in attacking her, like literal hounds biting the flesh of a wounded animal, killing Muddy in the process. Sven, in the Strike Noir, comes in and takes out the hounds while Sham yells out to her. Back on board the EA ship the Bonaparte, Sven sees Neo Roanoke wheel in a dying Stella. This is right after the capture of Stella by the Minerva and the eventual returning of Stella to Neo by Shin. Sven mentions that it is an extended and it doesn't live too long. Sven is not a biological CPU, but it seems that he does go through the rigorous training that a biological CPU goes through. At the DSSD laser transmission station, Apollon A, Selene, and the team are testing out the Vaucher Lumiere system on the 401. Sol tells Stella that Edmund once called this unit the Stargazer. She decides this will be the name of the new unit and the AI system. The GSX-401FW Stargazer Gundam is designed for space exploration in mind. It is a two-seat unit, but the second seat can be installed with an AI unit that will collect data based off of the pilot, but it needs training data to operate properly, and this unit currently does not have it. The Vulcher Lumiere propulsion system is designed for interplanetary travel and is used in tandem with its solar sail, which which uses solar wind to pick up speeds quickly. Vulture and Lumiere makes sense on these units, but when you see them in action in Destiny, it doesn't quite make much sense at all. The solar wind can be inverted, and the propulsion can be used as a weapon if necessary. They fire a laser at the Stargazer to test its solar sail. It is a success. Phantom Pain is on its way towards DSSD's control station, with the intent on capturing the Stargazer unit. It is a Gertie Lou class ship with the Strike Noir and Verde Buster on board. The DSSD launches their custom civilian astrays. The UT-1D Civilian Astray DSSD Custom was a unit built by the Junk Guild along with former Morgan Rot employees. The UT stands for utility and these units are mainly used to defend themselves. 
Being neutral just means having more enemies. You sometimes can't science without blowing up some mobile suits. I think my grandma said that to me once. This unit uses an electromagnetic propulsion system for more refined movements and because they are more environmentally conscious. However, it makes these units quite weak at the hands of a unit using nuclear fission. The control base is being infiltrated on foot. Selene and Sol decide to hop into the Stargazer Gundam. Oh yeah, and Gundam on this unit refers to Guided Unmanned Deployment Autonomic Manipulation. Stargazer launches. They use the Vulture Lumiere propulsion system to deflect the enemy's beam attack back at them. They are successful to take down a few units. Salsa Verde Gundam starts destroying the base as they don't give a shit about the science happening here in particular. But Shams and Salsa Verde Buster loses all power. The civilian astray surround and destroy the Gundam. It only took like 12 of them at point blank range. Sven in the Striker Noir is the only member left. It engages in battle with the Stargazer. The control room is almost destroyed, but the Apollon laser is still active. Selene ejects Soul from the Stargazer and tells him to activate the laser. Stargazer holds on to the Strike Noir and tells anyone alive to fire the laser on the Stargazer Gundam. They fire the laser hitting both Stargazer and Strike Noir. Because of the design of the Gundam, it didn't destroy their units but rather flung them out into space at high speeds. Strike Noir is destroyed, but the Stargazer is intact. Selene saves Finn from the remains of his Gundam. She finds out that they are somewhere in between Earth and Venus. She gives them both a drug that increases their oxygen absorption and they head towards Earth and hope for the best. Sven reminds Selene of Edmund. They send a communication to the Stargazer, but no one responds. And that will do it for this episode. This was a good one. It was nice, concise, and a tight 50 minutes. They made every moment on screen actually count. They aren't just trying to hit 50 episodes, so that's refreshing. Another Gundam property down and another sad ending. However, apparently in the manga, both Selene and Sven survive, and Sven becomes a member of DSSD. I will have to check that out. Next time, we will be taking a look at the Astray Blue Frame and Red Frame as we dive into the Astray OVA. But until next time, coordinators, remember that if you are neutral, it just means you have more enemies now. Peace.